everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today's story was written by Bid You Abu and narrated by me, Merrily Mary V.O. Three Questions for a Witch We brush past the vines and branches that hang down from the trees like nature's arms ready to drag us away or tear us apart. Bonnie shrieks as she almost walks right into a big banana spider, but I pull her away and tell her not to freak out. I heard my parents talking once about things in the woods that know when you're afraid and will hurt you when you're scared the most. I don't tell Bonnie that. I don't think it will help. Bonnie gets tired of walking after a while. I don't blame her. It's hard to keep going, but we have to find it. What if mom and dad... We should go back, Bonnie says. We can't go back without him again, I say. Bonnie doesn't even look at me, but she stops complaining. I tell her just to stay behind me, and I'll lead the way. And when we hear noises, I tell her it's the wind. Maybe it is. The walk takes longer than I expected. I almost start to agree with Bonnie. I wonder if we'll get stuck out here and end up lost the same way as Jack. Then I start thinking about him, and I get scared. But just when I'm getting ready to take Bonnie and run away, she tugs at my arm. That's it! She yells, pointing to the moss-covered house. It's deep in the woods where a house shouldn't be, with trees growing all around it like they don't mind the company. We stand in place and watch it for a while. Part of me didn't think we would actually find it. The thing parents in our town always warn their kids about when telling them to stay out of the woods. We found the witch's house. Do you think she's in there? Bunny asks. I guess we'll have to go up and check. You're older, Bonnie says, reminding me of my responsibility. I nod and start to walk towards the house. Bonnie grabs my hand. I can feel her shaking, but she won't let go. Let's just go home, she says. We have to know, I say. Bonnie seems to understand, but she still doesn't let go. So we walk to the house together, me leading the way. The voice comes from inside before I even knock. Children, why have you come to me? Her voice sounds like none I've ever heard. So chilling, it threatens to freeze me in place, but I know I have to be brave. So after a moment, I answer the witch. We're looking for our brother. His name is Jack. He's... We lost him in the woods. Come in, the witch says. I feel Bonnie tug at my arm again. I'm hesitant too, of course, but we can't have come all this way just to turn back here. This is our only chance. I step inside the witch's house and Bonnie follows. Children, why do you look for your brother here? The witch asks. We've heard the adults talk. They say there's a witch who knows everything that happens in these woods. We think, we hope you can tell us what happened to Jack. You hear the truth, and I am always happy to help those brave enough to come to my house. Three questions. You may ask three questions, and you will have your answers. <laughs> Bonnie holds my hand tight, and I take a moment to think. I've heard adults mention the cleverness of things in the woods, and I fear the witch may try to trick me. But I can't think of many options, so I ask the question that's been on my mind since we lost him. What happened to Jack? Come, the witch says. She leads me to a large cauldron filled with some sort of swirling liquid. Bonnie following behind as I look inside. Watch closely, children, and your first question will be answered. The liquid in the cauldron forms itself into an image, one Bonnie and I immediately recognize. It's the two of us with Jack exploring in the woods against our parents' wishes. It's the day we lost him. 
I see us playing around the trees and trying to climb vines that hang from their branches though we never make it far. I see us plan out the paths we might take next time we sneak away into the woods, not expecting the circumstances that would lead me back into the woods. I see us tell each other scary stories about all the things in the woods just before it starts getting dark. I see myself say, We better get home soon. Because I know it won't be long before someone is looking for us. I try to hide my concern that we've already been out too long. Just follow me. I remember the way back. And hurry up. Bonnie and Jack agree and follow behind as I start leading them out of the woods. But I'm in such a hurry that I don't look back. And I don't see something catches Jack's eye. He stops in place and stares at something farther into the woods. Whatever it is... It's covered in shadow, but it has Jack mesmerized. I don't see myself or Bonnie anymore. We've gone on without him, not even noticing we're one person short. Jack is all alone, staring into the darkness, and as he does, it seems to spread all around him. Jack quickly turns and looks in every direction. He realizes he's alone now. He calls out for us, but we aren't there to answer. Jack quickly turns and looks in every direction. He realizes he's alone now. He calls out for us, but we aren't there to answer. He's scared. Wait! He screams. Where'd you go? I don't know the way home. Can't you hear me? Then a voice calls out to him from the darkness. My voice. Only it's not really mine. This way, Jack. Over here. You were lost, Jack, but that's no bother. We found you. Just follow my voice, Jack. Bonnie's voice comes next, but I know it's not really Bonnie. Come on, Jack. What's taking you? Hurry up and follow us before we get in trouble. Poor Jack doesn't understand what's happening, and he just wants to go home. I can't see you, he says, moving closer to the darkness. Just a few more steps and you'll see us. The voice that sounds like me says back. Don't worry, Jack. We're right here. We would never leave you behind. Just a few more steps. I, I, I knew you wouldn't leave me, Jack says but his voice is trembling. I just want to go home. He steps into the shadow, and then I don't see Jack anymore. The darkness swallows him up and fades away back into the woods. Then I see Bonnie and me again. We're looking around, and we're worried. We're calling out for Jack. I thought I heard him, I say. Where did he stop following us? Bonnie doesn't know the answer. So she just keeps calling his name. Jack! Jack, where'd you go? The images stop there, and the cauldron's odd swirling liquid goes back to how it was before. I look to Bonnie, who has the same worried expression I imagine must be on my face. Then I look to the witch. What was that? I ask. Why did those voices sound like us? A dark spirit of these woods took your brother. Young Jack couldn't keep up, so he had to go first. I start to ask what she meant by first. But before I can, Bonnie asks our next question in a shaking, frightened voice. Will we ever see Jack again? Yes! <laughs> the witch says with a laugh. Behold! She again draws our attention to the swirling liquid inside her cauldron, which is forming itself into another shape. I see myself and Bonnie again. Only this time, we're not walking through the woods with our brother. This time, we're standing in the witch's house looking down into her cauldron. I can't see what image we're looking at, and I wonder if it's the same one I'm seeing now. Then, I see us scream. <laughs> The version of us in the vision jump back from the cauldron and cower. I can hear the witch laugh, and she keeps laughing, while I see myself grab Bonnie and run out of the house. The images end there. I look up at the witch to see her smiling with anticipation. She wants our last question. 
I feel at the same time afraid and compelled to ask. Bonnie squeezes my hand. I ask the question, where is Jack now? The witch points to her cauldron. Bonnie and I look inside. We can see Jack's face deep in the swirling liquid. Then we see it a little closer. The liquid is still swirling. His face comes closer. It has no emotion. And the eyes are missing. His head floats to the top. The liquid isn't making an image. We scream. The witch laughs. We jump back from the cauldron. We cower. The witch still laughs. I grab Bonnie's hand and she latches onto mine. We run from the house. We still hear the laughing, but we don't stop running. I try not to look at the darkness surrounding some trees as it seems to follow us. I try not to think about the things in the woods that hurt you when you're scared the most. I don't let go of Bonnie's hand. We keep running, and we run all the way home. The whole time, as I think about what happened to Jack and try not to think about what happened to Jack, there's one more question in my mind. A question I hope Bonnie isn't asking herself, but she probably is. A question I'm afraid and compelled to consider. Which one of us is next? <laughs>